Relocating and retiring to a new country can be an incredibly daunting experience. So what are some of the common challenges, the common hurdles that Australian expats face when they are retiring to a new country? Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner, and today we're exploring some of the common challenges when it comes to retiring in a new country as an Australian expat. Number one is your residence. Now, I'm not talking about your tax residence, I'm talking about where you actually live. Does it make more sense to rent? Should you buy? Does that impact your tax treatment? your pension that you'll receive, uh, your income or asset means test, what is more affordable, what is more sensible based on that country of residence. And of course, how does that impact your estate planning and potentially your tax residency? So explore this one ahead of time because it may make sense to actually secure that residence before you even relocate to that country. Now, of course, there is no one size fits all, but planning ahead can be incredibly important. Ensure that your retirement nest egg will be able to survive, will be able to provide the level of income you need once that money is carved out if you are going to buy your main residence. Now, number two, of course, is healthcare. Health insurance and healthcare go hand in hand. Do you need good private health insurance in your new country of residence? Chances are that would be a great idea, but there is no one size fits all. What is the quality of care like? Should you rely on Medicare if something went seriously wrong and return to Australia? Do you need to hold an international private health insurance policy because you're going to move around when you retire? Again, there is no one size fits all, but it's important to explore and assess your access to good quality health cover. What would happen if something went wrong? What would your family do? Where would you go? What would the emergency look like? and what insurance do you have in place? The next one, of course, is estate planning. Now, living in a new country, or if your beneficiaries are in a different country, it's important to understand how this impacts your estate planning. Now, this could be as simple as just your will. It could be ensuring you have enduring powers of attorney or lasting powers of attorney in your new country of residence so that you have someone there you trust, potentially your partner, a child, a friend, whoever it might be, to make health and or financial decisions on your behalf in the event that you can't do so. It's also important to consider the tax treatment of any assets that you are actually distributing by your estate. Will they be taxed? Will they be inheritance tax? What would your beneficiary have to do with those assets based on their country of residence going forward? Do you need to have a separate will in your new country of residence? Or can you just update a previous will? Or should you actually do both? Should you have a new will in your country of residence and update your previous will to ensure that the two work together? There's a lot to consider when it comes to your estate planning, but it's important to make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Now the next one, of course, tax implications. What is the tax on your worldwide assets? What is the tax on the retirement income that you're bringing in? Is it from superannuation? Is it from a share portfolio? Is it rental income you're receiving from properties overseas? Is it cash in the bank? Is it some other annuity style product? Again, it's important to consider to understand not just the current tax treatment of that income, but what could change going forward. Are there any changes being actively discussed in your planned country residence. Thailand being a great example where they just changed the treatment of income being brought into the country. These are the changes we need to think about, plan ahead, strategize, and make sure you have that backup plan in place or that your retirement income could survive and that you would be able to still live your your sort of desired or target retirement lifestyle with those changes in place. And of course, finally, connecting with the community. Depending on where you're retiring, where you're going to live, how remote it is, 
building new friends, getting connected with other Aussie expats or other expats, or even locals in that new country can be a challenge. But thankfully there are organizations like ANZA, like OzCham, like thousands of Facebook groups that you can join and get connected to to start to meet other people just like yourself. So with a bit of prior planning, these hurdles can be very easily overcome, but it's important, seek advice, plan ahead, and start speaking with people who've already trodden the same path you're going down. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any questions. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.